Good morning, everyone. Um, I'm really sorry I can't be with you today uh, live, but uh, the wonders of um, Zoom and video conferencing that we've discovered over the last year bring me to you semi-live. I could be an avatar, of course, but we'll play with that at some future date. Um, I'm, I want to talk to you about the internet today, and I want to start by just re recalling what happened last year as we went into COVID. Um, and overnight, uh, we were only able to communicate with each other via this amazing technology of the internet. Uh, well, I say only, it was the main means of communication globally, not just locally, not just nationally, but internationally. And we were able, and we've learned to do the most amazing things. Look at the growth of TikTok and how that's kept people going in terms of um, enjoying the singing and the dancing and, and how in business we view Zoom and Teams and all the other um, video conferencing uh, technologies that were there, but um, we've now, we're now so familiar with them. We're familiar with meeting people on Zoom and also in Zoom, Zoom uh, tiredness. I mean, it really is. It, it, Zoom fatigue is, is a real thing. But the most amazing thing throughout all that has been how the we all piled onto the internet in, in our billions and using video um, and it stayed up and running right it hugely resilient and robust and it's a, a, a fantastic testament to the pioneers um uh, my friends Vince Cerf and Bob Kahn who invented TCP IP and of course Tim, Ber Aaron, Tim Berners-Lee who invented HTML and HTTP so that we could you know we could do this interactive stuff over the internet um and what's what's really interesting is that as we as we didn't know COVID was coming, but as it emerged, uh, as we began to realise that we were going to have to move onto the internet to run our lives, we in, in the West certainly were beginning very much to discuss how we how we control the internet, how we stop bad things happening, um, you know, how we keep people safe online. And next week, the government's the UK government is going to. Um, put up its new internet safety uh, regulations. And, um, you know, we've had to pu puzzle about um, why, why do people do bad things on the internet and um, how we can stop that happening and how we control the tech giants who've become so dominant in our lives and absorb all our data and give us back adverts and the things they do for us, we want, right? We want a search engine. We want to be able to shop. Imagine life without Amazon when we were in complete lockdown. Um, and all the other online shopping we did with the supermarkets and everything. Um, you know, it would have been an absolute nightmare if these, but they, those companies are very dominant um, and uh, in, not just in terms of the way they absorb our data, but in terms of our economies as well. And, and we have to address all those issues. And we've learned so much over the last year about what, what our values are and what's important to us and to um, to to keep going for the for our, for the good and to try and make sure that we aren't um, harming people because of this um, a, a, you know this dominance of this technology and all that has to be addressed and it's so fascinating and before COVID my colleague Kieran O'Hara and I were writing a book about all this. Um, we actually finished it in uh, October last year, so we, we, we wrote, wrote a lot of it during COVID, but we had already uh, the contract with Oxford University Press and to write a book about the internet, and we, we call it um, Four Internets, and the book's actually due to hit, hit the um, uh, to, um, publication, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, it's due to hit the shelves uh, in July. Uh, the digital and the physical shelves. Um, but we started this thesis thinking about this um, well, three years ago. We published a paper in, in 2018 about the potential geopolitical fragmentation of the internet. I'm going to talk to you a bit about that now. The thesis is that whilst um, you know, the internet has become so dominant in our lives, 
not just with COVID, but more so with COVID. And it's something we're very dependent on. It's probably uh, under threat more than it's ever been before because of this geopolitical, these geopolitical issues that we've been thinking about. So let me explain why for internet. The original internet, the um, uh, open, universal, free to access, free to use internet, which largely came to us from Silicon Valley. So in the book, we call it the Silicon Valley internet, came about because of the, um, the work that people like Vincent Bolkan did to create universal open and free standards that anybody with a computer could connect to any other computer that used the same standards and protocols and those standards and protocols have become the dominant global universal standards on which it enables anybody to to, to actually as I say, any computer in the world linked to all the other computers in the world very distributed decentralized network and and then of course tim built um the web on top of that that's still there um there are uh, forces um, that have, have looked, tried to change those standards and protocols, and I'll come back to that later in terms of what the dangers might be there. But what has all has emerged since, I um, mean, the web's been there for 30 years, so in the last, you know, 15 years of the web, since the middle of the 2000s, when we started thinking about web science as a study of the of the web and a socio-technical approach to that study we'd be looking at this and and uh we have seen other internets emerge that kieran and i talk about in the book so the second well the other three really are the one that's dominant in the us the one that's dominant in europe and the one that's dominant in china and the us is a very market force internet this is where Certainly, as far as the West is concerned, the big tech giants are that have emerged largely on the coast, Silicon Valley, and some in the East Coast and the Northwest of America. The Googles, the Amazons, the Ebays, the Twitters, the Instagrams, the so on and so on, so forth. All the ones you know about. And they uh, uh, largely exist in Silicon Valley, but they lobby Washington. Uh, where the government in the US is to get the rules and regs and the laws that they want to make more money. That's the purpose of them. There's nothing wrong with making money on, uh, on the web. Many people have done it. Um, and that's partly what drives it. But the, the, the fact that those companies are based in the US, um, they operate under the laws in the US and, and they lobby in Washington to get those the laws that will help them. And they're not always the same. Not every not, not all the companies agree on what they should be. Net neutrality is one that goes backwards and forwards, depending on what type of company you are. Netflix has a very different view of net neutrality to Google, for example, I would imagine. Um, and you've got the Facebooks. I don't think I mentioned Facebook, <laughs> hugely dominant in terms of what Facebook wants out of um, the, the, the lawmakers in Washington. Um, and, you know, the, the key thing about the Internet to say over and over again is there is no one uh, organization that runs the Internet. You have the IETF that um, Vint and others sent up, set up to, to, to talk about the standards in an open way. But there's there isn't uh, there's no one country owns the Internet and um, there's no one. It isn't a company. Um, it is it is it has and that has many stakeholders, including us. And this is part of its strength, but also its weakness, weaknesses. Now, as you shift further uh, east and come to Europe, Europe through the EU Commission and supported very much by free thinkers and people who wanted to keep the openness of the internet and the web, um, Europe has very much gone down the data protection route. Um, we all see this with GDPR. We all see it more as they develop the AI regulations, uh, but it's very much about protecting people's data, protecting our civil liberties, uh, and against the, the big companies, against uh, countries that would seek to do us harm, and, and, and generally for the good of society. 
and the good of humanity. Um, but there's the argument, of course, that in doing so, they're creating a siloed internet that other people have to conform with if they want to trade with Europe, but otherwise will just pay lip service to. And there's also the issue of innovation in that sort of environment. It's sometimes very hard for small companies to do things if they don't have a lawyer that can explain GDPR to them and for university researchers too. Um, there's a, you know, so there's a, there's a big um, issue around um, where it gets European companies, and um, uh, but you know, for good or bad, that's that's uh, um, that's the route that Europe has gone. And then, of course, as you go further to the east, of course, you come to the elephant in the room: China, one point four billion people, or whatever it is, and uh, and has from the very first time that the internet arrived in China, which I think was around 1997, um, the, um, you know, the, the Chinese government saw from the very beginning that this was a means to um, control its citizens, or at least it both needed to, it could use it to um, disseminate information that it wanted to disseminate to citizens, but also to control the information that was flowing on the internet to stop people talking about revolution and dissent um, and things the government didn't approve of. Very different culture, very different style of government. I mean, they've never been a democratic um, country and, um, but, you know, uh, people in, the, in China have very good access to the internet and enjoy the use of it. Uh, in in their culture with the the values that they have there and don't worry too much that they can't get hold access to the BBC website because you know they don't speak English it's like it doesn't matter to you whether you can get access to the Chinese internet because you can't speak Chinese most of you so you know there's a there's a language firewall anyway but but it's it's a different culture different values and um, uh, has you know the internet has been used incredibly successfully in China and of course, they have their own tech giants, the Baidu's, the Weibo's, the Tencent's, all the types of companies, um, shopping and searching and social media with WeChat uh, that the Chinese use all the time. Uh, and, you know, you were seeing that China has its own problems with its big tech giants. Uh, but there, um, you know, the, 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 the law basically in China says the government can have access to any data, whereas in the West, um, our laws are completely different. Our laws say you can't have government have access, but we also have the problem of the, the tech giants dominating um, our world and, and, taking, and taking our data. So whose data is it anyway? So those are the, our, our uh, one plus three internets that we talk about in the book. But there are other dynamics going on here. People often say, well, is Russia an internet? Actually, we don't class Russia as a separate internet. We, we think of Russia as being a country that likes to flex its muscles, its technology muscles, and likes to use the internet to um, put about misinformation or um, to hack into, uh, into key websites um, around the world. And I'll sit there seeking to... Um, to create their own internet, to, to, to put a wall between uh, the, the Russian internet and the rest of the world, or the internet in Russia and the rest of the world. But doing that retrospectively is a really hard thing to do. So uh, one wonders if they'll achieve that and what, what, what for. And then we also talk about another very dominant player now, increasingly, which is India. We have a chapter in the book on India, which we call the swing state, um, because um, the, India's a, a you know 1.3 nearly 1.4 billion people um, suffering terribly in COVID at the moment, but you know it's, it's a democracy um, uh, and and the way that India goes onto the internet will, will dom uses the internet in India will dominate um, the world going forward. We have we lasted 2019 we reached the 50 50 moment where. Um, it was it was estimated that 50 percent of the planet had access to the internet but the 50 percent to come will be largely in rural china rural africa and rural india and we know which way china will go will go china very much dominates what's happening on the internet in most of africa um, so india is going to be really important going forward as to which route it takes in terms of its internet future 
And I think it's beholden on the, our governments to recognize that the key thing that keeps all this going, what helped us survive in, in COVID, so we understand it, is the fact that we have a universal internet and we break that, we break those technical standards at our peril. But we need to recognize that there isn't one single internet in terms of it's very different in different parts of the world and we have to recognize that difference and we need just as we do with climate change we have to involve all the big parties at the table discussing this because you can't imagine the internet world without a china without an india just because of the sheer scale and i want to finish with a couple of lines about artificial intelligence as you know most i've been very involved with the uk government's ai strategy and um i want to just make sure that policymakers understand you can't put the internet in one bucket and ai in another ai and data governance uh, and the ethics um, around that is very tied to the way to internet governance because largely we create the data and we and we will we will we will access the AI tools and services including the 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 the, the, the tech, technology the the big tech giants use through the internet so these technologies are all very intertwined and when we're thinking about policy in this area we should think of it as a whole and not and not as sep in separate silos. So I hope you're having a good day. Again, I'm sorry I can't be with you. And um, yeah, you, we should all be out there working for uh, the greater good of the world through the internet.